Jordan Parker from the Lean and Mean Academy on YouTube. This guy right here built a pressure washing, window cleaning, soft washing business from the ground up to six figures, maybe multiple six figures. I, I know that you are very successful. And at the same time, you documented your journey and created an entire YouTube channel and your own entire like methodology on how to how to start, launch, and build and grow a very successful pressure washing business. So you're very uh, successful and experienced in the service business, dealing with thousands of clients. You run a five-star agency, and you've helped a lot of people. And even on my channel, I hear your name getting around a lot. Now, you've been doing this for years, but you, you're like pollinating over into the landscaping business too. And people are like, bro, I was watching Aaron Parker's channel, Lean and Mean Academy, like a couple of days ago, and he said some shit that blew my mind. So, <laughs> bro, and it's and I, and I did meet you in person for the first time at the BBB, the, the Business Bourbon and Bullshit, which is a, a private mastermind group down in Tennessee that, that I was very happy. Uh, I felt very, very honored to be part of with like Bobby Walker and Michael Dalkey and some of the big names in the industry. And then they were going around and everybody was introducing themselves. And I was across the room from you. I never met you before. You had actually watched a bunch of my YouTube videos and you started talking some shit that was like about business. I was like, that's exactly what I'm thinking. And so we became friends and uh, we've been friends ever since, bro. And it's a pleasure to have you on here. Guys, get ready. I know he's going to be dropping some knowledge bombs. So what's up, Aaron Parker? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good? Bro, I'm well. I'm fired up. We had the first nice day in Michigan in a while. Sun shining. So the season, the phone's already ringing, man. Good, dude. Yeah, no, I uh, I remember, man, when I first got started in my business. And, and it was wild because, uh, you know, the whole thing came full circle for, for you and I. I was uh, 2016, 2017. The guys on my channel know this story, but your people probably don't. Maybe they can resonate with it. I was, I was uh, just started a what I didn't know at the time a very very long arduous expensive divorce, and um, I was you know kind of kicked out of the house, if you will. I was living in my van at the twenty four hour gym. I still maintained my membership, right, so I could uh, go bathe in there, and uh, I had this tour van. I was in music for probably like eight years and I was touring all over and I had a 15 passenger van. So I was sleeping in this thing and bro, it is colder in the van than it is outside. I will tell you that much. <laughs> and so, um, I was, I had to have money. I had 500 bucks to my name. I obviously couldn't afford a rent payment or, uh, you know, any upfront costs at that point in time. But I, uh, turned on and I was, I was looking through YouTube, man. And you know, it's wild. I found your video on how to start a window cleaning business. And, uh, you know what I did? I didn't waste any time. I saw that video that you were talking, you know, you were showing the tools and the squeegees and I was, I was just running numbers in my head and I was like, man, all right. So he's got a, a stick with a piece of rubber on it. All right. Well, that's not too expensive. I was like, I can, I think I can afford that. He's got a bucket. He's got a little long mop looking thing. Maybe I, I may, where can I get this stuff? So I Googled around. I found out uh, like Lowe's up the street had some beginner level stuff. I found out and uh, I just went and knocked down eighth Avenue in Nashville. And um, I, I'll tell you, bro, like, like that moment of just putting action into place and, and I really needed to be pushed into that corner. I didn't know it, but it changed my life. I, I did not know it at the time. It was just a, a terrible space for me to be in, but it was the magic that launched, you know, for the last four or five years, it, it, you definitely helped launch that. So I want to say thank you to you, top G Kalfas in the comments, bro. Yes. So, uh, you know, you, you just don't ever know who you're inspiring, man. And, and that's probably why we connected, um, at BBB. And I knew though, when I got started in, window cleaning because I was so broke. I hate speaking to the brokenness because, you know, you grew up in a similar situation. I wasn't, I wasn't poor, but we didn't have a ton of money. And I started really noticing that there's a lot of guys who get started in this stuff for similar reasons, right? That's what the channel kind of shows me is that there's a lot of guys who get started and they have a story similar, maybe not the same, but very similar and that's when I, I actually sat down with Dalkey, uh, the guy at BBB, uh, before I went to the event, we had just met and I told him that I was starting something called the Lean and Mean Academy. And it was like how to 
show a guy how to make six figures uh, with one truck. Hit the truck he's got in his driveway right now. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It could be beat up. could be new. But he wants to kind of reclaim his life for himself. Maybe he's at a, a dead-end job that he doesn't like. Or he is in my situation living in a van. If he's got that truck, he's got transportation, we can use that as the launch pad for one truck, big profits. And so Lean and Mean was really born out of necessity, um, but it turned into a methodology. It kind of turned into a language, a lifestyle. I've got guys who've been in business for three years and all they do, they're making multiple six figures and they run their truck. And they take home six because the margins are good. And so it, it's almost like it, it's very interesting when you get your pricing right. You get your 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 you're the concierge. You're the high ticket guy in town. Uh, you have a lot of high end clientele. Um, a guy can do that. And so that's who I speak to, Keith, is the guy who's not necessarily wanting to uh, build a five, 10 truck business. You know, I get that. That's that American thing that, that ego, I get it, dude. You know, I want to, I want to conquer the world with pressure washing and, and landscaping or whatever you want to own the area. But what if, what if your business could be a launch pad to other investments, which is the lean and me model is the, what if it's the launch pad to real estate? What if it's the launch pad to other things that are not pressure washing or are not landscaping. And so that's the idea. The idea isn't to get to so get to get so caught in building a 10 truck model because I don't deal well with knuckleheads, man. I really don't deal well with employees. Like I had to learn that about myself. And it took me till probably I was like 29, 30 to really understand that I I don't deal well with people if they show up late. Like I ain't I ain't cool with I don't massage it. You know what I mean? Like I just I don't tolerate it for myself and I really struggle. And, and that's just an Aaron attribute. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I just don't have that. I have a kind of a short fuse for lackadaisical stuff. So I had to figure out a way to not leverage $15 an hour, $18 an hour guys. I had to figure out a way to leverage that into other investments off my own back. And usually that's kind of foreign. Right. A lot of guys are like, no, you got to scale if you really want to make money. But what they don't understand is, at least in pressure washing, I'm speaking for the only thing I know. I don't know landscape, but it's it, in pressure washing. If you add the second, third truck, what happens to your personal income is it takes a tank. It tanks because you have insurance, you have, uh, uh, you know, costs for the employees, you have all of, you know, maintenance on the vehicles, you know, exponential tools that are going out to all of those different trucks. And now what they don't ever calculate, because they're like, I'll get the other truck, is they don't ever calculate the marketing load that that's going to take to keep afloat. They don't like think, they don't understand the load and the expenditure on the marketing end that it takes to keep a second truck and a third truck on the road. And so I was just like, that's not for me. I want to teach the guys who want to bring home six figures which is above average income for sure. We know that the stats are true. Real quick, have you ever seen those competitions? Is it the bodybuilding or those those semi trucks or something? It's like a power competition where they're towing with the chain like a load, and then every foot that they move forward, the load actually increases until that that motherfucker just it just stops. <laughs> and it's you know what I'm talking that, about? Is that tractor pulls? It's got that I, big I think sled, that is a big sled, and it keeps getting closer to the truck as it goes. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the, the load increases and the profit margins get thinner and thinner till you actually can. I did. I I I I know people literally like they'll go from a half a million to seven hundred fifty thousand and make less at seven hundred fifty thousand, and then hit a million and literally be just breaking even and can't even like. And then they got to cross that threshold of cash flow purgatory to get to the next, depending on the business, the business model where you're at. But it's like what you're talking about is the incurring overhead expenses more insurance and you got to get a shop and place to put your stuff like if, if you got multiple trucks and you're running out of your house and you got like you know let's say you you got a family and then you got employees showing up and like <laughs> like what the it's, it's it's this whole hodgepodge of stuff going on that 
it's like the, the expenses keep going up. So you're talking about a lean and mean one truck, high profit model, make it as profitable as possible, and then possibly a, be a launch pad into other investments. Like this, as soon as you start talking that game, because you are right, what, I, what I've what i heard as well is, <laughs> you gotta, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Keep going, man. Oh, dude. I, oh, man, I love keeping. Yeah, dog. Hit him with a yeah, dog, man. Hit him with a yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog, bro. Dude, these motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> so, dude, yeah. so that's it, you know. And and the funny thing is, I had a guy reach out to me like two years into my journey of kind of developing lean and mean, and he emailed me, and I don't, I haven't spoken to the guy since. I don't know where he went. It was like a little angel who wrote me a long email. And he told me what I was doing. And I had no idea that I was doing this. But once he put me on this path, I was able to research. And he said, man, you're doing, he goes, I don't know if you've ever read this guy because it's super obscure. There's no reason for a young guy to know who I'm going to tell you this person is. Uh, and I didn't. And he said, but he is the king of lean and mean. And his name is Shigeo Shingo. And Eo Shingo is Japanese. Spell and, it. Oh man, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> I could say my best. Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong too. I mean, I lean into that though. I lean into the bad pronunciation. Shigeo Shingo, by God. Um, <laughs> um, he developed the uh, on-time production for the Toyota Toyota production facility after World War II. So everything pre and everybody runs on this system now. Uh, everything pre Shigeo Shingo, it was all, they would make a ton of parts and they would store them in warehouses and it was really inefficient. They, they oh, he had, revolutionized the auto industry and the, uh, the sorry. production assembly line putting all together when, uh, uh, Edwards Deming was called to consult with the, I think it was Ford or Chevy Motor Company in the, I think it was the late sixties They he was touring the facility saw that everything was made out of heavy duty metal the cars back then was and and then and the, the the engineers were having to like bang the bolts into place and like force everything he's like uh have you seen uh what you know toyota is doing across overseas uh they're whopping your ass and you might want to go check that out so they were somehow able to get over there and tour and find out what the hell was going on and then it just blew their minds because they were super hyper efficient I just happened to hear the story in an internet marketing course that for like 10 years ago. And it was like, ding, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I got excited. Keep going, man. Well, Shingo, Shingo <laughs> figured it out and he kind of kaizen like the whole process, right. To where they could, they could achieve an, a, a big amount. And for me and lean and mean, it was like, how do I get the most money? And this is going to be contrary to all of my, country bumpkin people that I grew up with. So I can talk shit. I'm from Alabama. So uh, you're welcome. But it's like, how do I get the most money for the least amount of work? <laughs> oh my God. He can't believe he said that. Yeah. That's exactly what our job is as entrepreneurs is to go out and make as much money as we can and not break our backs. Like everyone I grew up around. So the only way I just got, indignified about it i was like no i'm gonna be the best in town i am the best i'm the most expensive so that's the way it is i only work for people who have money to pay me okay and if people hated that or didn't like it or wanted to you know how landscape pressure washes probably get the same guys they want to hate on everything but it's like who cares all right because at the end of the day i want to spend time with my son that's what i want to do and I don't care about what anyone else thinks. So the lean and mean model was built on that. It was to have the marketing force of a four or five truck business. So mm -hmm. I ranked number one in my city on Google. Now, I don't have 10 trucks. I haven't been in business for 10 years. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm taking all of their cookies too. So you got to have an abundance of leads in order to charge the prices I charge. Because guess what? My, my
uh, push air city mindset and replace it with an abundance or a capitalist type of mindset where it doesn't. Oh. For the highest prices, like the primo shit. So, so before you go into the marketing, because I can't wait to hear what you're going to say. I'm like, I'm. Bro, you're so good at that, like that, that you're really good at that. You're really talented at the, like the segue and you're really talented at like the podcast question. That's a talent. I, I wish I had that talent. My biggest insecurity is being stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> really so I will tell you the mindset is, is possibly 80, 80 to 85% of it all. It's literally, it's walking as if you are. Because I noticed something, man. Like, when will you be worth it? You know, can you tell me a day, like, in two years or five years or six months or three weeks, when are you going to be worth it? And I know a lot of guys, they, they, they think this way. They think that somebody's going to come along and give them a piece of paper with a little golden seal on it that says, hey, today guess what? You can charge high ticket because you have good self-esteem now and you're worth it. No one does that. That never happens. So guess what? You'll go 10 years and you still don't really feel it. So it's a self-esteem issue. And when you can identify that and you become aware of it, awareness is the first step to change. Then you find out that today could be that day. Today you decide. And I started testing it out. And so I would in my brain, too. I was on the phone one time. I've actually called called you up when I was frustrated about my business. Those 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 actions and it might they do it and they see it actually work. I am I am make like it's working and and I'm I'm actually can feel like taking a risk. People are terrified to raise their prices because. They go do it, and then they start losing their client. <clears throat> You're talking about like old clients. Well, I know you got to keep them how you got them, and the story of the five dollar hooker and all that. Oh, I, I, you know, if I want to raise my price, I'm just gonna raise my price. Like, okay, that ain't that ain't an issue. <laughs> look, you know, you, I don't say that you double the price. Okay, I'm not saying that, but but look, man, like everything goes up and and the right customers understand that the right customer, man, there you here's the key. You have to become the right customer first. You have to become the customer you want. And this is something that I have found is kind of a foreign thought. OK, Um they, a lot of people, we, we're the type of people sometimes who want like the best deal we're, we're and we're going to haggle. We're going to go in and we're, we're haggling the guy for a used truck. You know what I mean? We're, we're doing all this. And it's like, Hmm, what are you attracting? Like, you're just going to attract what you are. So I find that I have to check myself a lot of times 
Um, you good over there? You got you getting close to the Wi-Fi? Apologize. Maybe a couple of people left. I hope not, because I want people to hear this, man. Oh, it's cool, bro. Yeah, it looks good to me. I'll... <laughs> and, uh, but it, it's time right now. Everybody in my neighborhood like, how about now? Is it better now? He said he's recording on a sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good now? Hey, look, you look good to me, bro. Look good. <clears throat> What I was saying is you got to become the customer you want. I think this is the biggest gap for, for a lot of guys. It was for me. Um, me paying full price at the counter of success, like me expecting to pay the full price for whatever I'm buying. Because how am I going to walk in with these my head held high trying to charge you know, high ticket prices and obviously give the best value? Um if, if you're skint, doesn't mean your customer's skin. That's funny. Uh, obviously, I'm going to give the best value to these people. I'm going to be there. I'm showing up when I'm going to say I'm going to show up. The job's going to be perfect. If it's not, we're going to fix it. Okay. All of these things, and so many people don't understand that there's a lot of people out there that's not like that. All right. You'll never hear from them again. There's plenty of contractors who are not as consistent as you. And so, if you're going to honor your work, you're going to be excellent. Like, guys, you can charge at the top 5% of the market. You just can. He's getting set up. I'm literally right underneath it. Are we good now? I think you're good, dude. I mean, I don't. I've been able to hear you the whole time. Same here. All right, keep going. That was it. That was my rant on that. Are you smoking a cigar? You damn right. <laughs> marketing, marketing methods like this market domination type strategy. How do you get a ton of leads flowing in? Skim the cream off the top, and and because I've I've raised my prices. I've done a lot of sales and marketing. We have a ton of five star Google Google reviews. Every winter, every spring, I'm like, that's it. I'm raising my prices and I'm not. And so what happens is I raise my prices and we get a lot of work, but we also start losing customers. And we've got to the point where I've raised the prices too high to where we're not closing the leads. And I have to panic a little and lower the prices just a little and find that sweet spot to keep the schedule full. I've sure. actually gotten to the point where I've. We've been booked out for six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks. We've been booked out for two and a half months. And I've also, where we got so thin all the way down, I, I mean, I'll admit it, that I was like holding my to my guns and drawing my line in the sand. There was three times last year, no, twice. My employees didn't know this. I didn't have work for them the next hour when they were finishing the job. And then and I'm sitting in the truck calling back customers, wheeling and dealing because I raised the prices to the point where back up to booked out like three weeks. But we were always booked out like maybe two, two weeks. And normally we're booked out six weeks. Mm -hmm. So and I kept riding that line with the pricing because I didn't want to I didn't want to go that way. And I was losing customers and saying like uh I've had customers be like, I can't afford to pay that. And I was like, uh, all right, like, um, peace. And some of them called back. So it's like, uh, you have to have a ton of leads coming in, the phone ringing off the hook. Like how many, how much more? Have you crunched the math and the numbers? Do you know, or how's it work for you? Well, as a one truck, like a one truck business, you say if you have a helper, or one employee and you're running a one truck business, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the cool thing about pressure washing and why it's so profitable is the margins are probably 50, at least 50%, okay? At least on the take home net, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's a good business model. That's key, all right? Because you got one truck, it has everything you need right there and that stuff stays locked down on that one truck. 
All right. I don't have to travel all over the place to get all different types of of things, right? A lot of landscaping, that's a big deal. You're like, well, he wants he wants red mulch. Okay, well, he wants the he wants all right, like, all right, so I don't ever have to think about a color of mulch and go down the list of variables that a guy would think about in landscape. It's it's immense. All right. Um so when it comes to that, your margins are 50%, sometimes 60 if you do it right. Uh, a guy doesn't have to close too many jobs. And plus a one to two truck, uh, excuse me, uh, two guys on one truck, dude, the amount of stuff they can clean in a day is astronomical. Okay. Uh, you'll have guys either, you know, an average truck when it's just trucking along and say a guy has three, four trucks, he's shooting for 15 to $1,600 a day. Mm-hmm. That's what he's shooting for. Okay. That's, that's good money. That's like one Is truck. Is per truck? Yeah. Per truck. That That's really good actually. Now a guy who's doing it by himself. I've got a guy, man, my buddy Ben here in Nashville, we work together. He, he takes a lot of my leads now and a big commercial stuff. And Ben will be there for two, three days by himself. He has excellent equipment. Everything is proper. Everything's tight. Ben will knock down four grand before one o'clock in the afternoon. All right. And he's one guy. So he took home about two grand that, that morning. All right. So that's kind of the idea behind this is that when you don't have a ton of variables, uh, and it's not super commoditized, right? You can raise those prices. You are dealing with high pressure. You are dealing with corrosive chemicals. You are dealing with very expensive landscaping, right? That you guys put in. We can't kill it. Otherwise, the giant insurance claim. So that kind of keeps the chuck in a truck, uh, keeps him keeps him down a little bit. Obviously, a lot of those guys don't have insurance. So what I'm saying is, is, you may need more leads, but you also do have recurring income when it comes to lawn care, right? It's, it is recurring for a lot of us. It's not recurring. It's every six months, every year. That's kind of what a lot of pressure washing is. If it's a quarterly deal, it's definitely commercial and you're cleaning the patios of like a Sonic or something like that, or Chick-fil-A or something like that. Okay, but the commercial is big money, as Andrew Tate right here in the comments says, but it is also net 30, net 60, and some of them will try to net 90 you. So a new guy, I don't recommend going too deep into commercial early on because you need that runway of cash flow. All right. You can't wait 90 days for for 30 grand and not have any more leads coming. in. Okay, you'll go out of business. So focus on residential first. Focus on crushing the residential, the high end residential market. And I don't care if you got to drive up to an hour away to get to that high end residential market. That's where you need to be marketing. OK, um, so that's that's my take on that. You don't need as many leads in our world because here's the truth. Guys don't have in pressure washing what everyone has in lawn care. Lawn care is very interesting. We've talked about this, right? They have a they have a battle um, that every homeowner has a has a mower, right? They got one even if it don't run. And so you deal you need to specialize in higher ticket specialized things that a homeowner cannot do and a chuck in a truck cannot do himself. And this is the beauty of some of these cats who do like specialized outdoor lighting right? Like this wild stuff, like, uh, what is it? Stanley does like retaining walls. Like, bro, you're not calling Chuck in a truck to do the retaining wall to have half your house fall down the side of a ravine when it caves in. All right. So it eliminates the $99 guy who is ever present in lawn care. All right. You got to go upstream and go from a generalist Uh, and become a specialist. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's how I would fight that battle in, in lawn care with us. How many homeowners have a commercial hot water pressure washing rig? They could even clean a commercial place. Right. Like They can't clean Sonic. They can't do that amount of concrete. You you just cannot clean 
the amount of concrete that place needs in the time frame because they're dealing with uh, influx of customers. You got to get the job done. So you got to have a serious rig. We're talking about like tops, 30 grand. All right. <laughs> tops. All right. That's a serious rig in our world. Um, to clean that amount of concrete in a quick amount of time. A homeowner, bro, he's got a small little Ryobi pressure washer. It'll take him a week and a half to clean that. He can't, he cannot do it. But what we're talking about when it comes to just mowing lawns, just mowing lawns, a homeowner could have a little hustler, right? And he's in the game. So you got to specialize. That hustler can cut, even though it's not, you know, the highest end of stuff, he can actually, heck, a little snapper. You know what I mean? He can actually do the lawn at 5 p.m. when he gets home off of work, and he can side hustle this. What we got to get into a place is where the competition can't outside hustle us. We got to be specialists. They can't get off work and go install lighting. They can't install irrigation like that, okay? Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how you... That's how you get rid of the, the competition, and that's how you make it to where you don't have to have 7,000 leads at $50 a cut. You see what I'm saying? My that's highest profit margin service in this business of mine is um, trimming gigantic shrubs that require ladder work and trimming ornamental trees. So this big, huge 16-foot, uh, orchard tripod ladder that we have and then the economy with extensions and the milwaukee yeah. which with all the extensions we trim stuff all a uh, hundred and fifty to 450 per ornamental tree these ornamental trees we charge 250 to 300 per tree like these big cra these crab apples and cherry blossoms and we can go around the tree in like an hour and a half for a full trim and clean up with thinning out the inside and then work away around a property and a bill that used to be you know 350 bucks for a whole day turns into 1250 for the day and then it just goes in the back of the dump trailer. We go and dump it. So you're doing the same amount of exerted effort Correct. and labor. Uh, it is kind of sh shitty climbing up and down that fucking ladder. But <laughs> it's, it, dude, it's, it's hard pulling weeds or trimming shrubs or pushing a mower or weed whipping all day. Especially yeah. we used to weed whip with shorts on and we didn't care. And <laughs> I'd have rocks dinging me. Cut, dude, I was just bleeding mixed with grass. My legs were like the green giant Deltoids. just covered in green grass. Huh? Pain <laughs> yeah, in pain, sunburn, bro. <laughs> Listening to uh, audiobooks, man. Like, I've done it all, but it's like, can feel like you build this identity because, like, I cut grass forever. That That's how I make money, right? And then you go and try something else by being exposed to it. I got exposed to tree trimming, ornamental tree trimming, and trimming huge, tall shrubs. And I was like, oh my God, like, and I would hear out of the customer's mouth. And we do some pressure washing too. Like we did, we did a job uh, last fall, right, uh, one of the last jobs we did. We did window cleaning inside and out, and then we pressure washed into the concrete for the porch and back walk up to the patio. Gave the customer a deal. It was a thousand bucks, and we were in and out. And Boom. It was like a four hour job, right? Nice. And I probably should have charged more, but I also was like, I don't know. It, it was like, it was a thousand bucks though in four and a half hours. And obviously, I have employees on payroll and workers comp, and, and I have all the expenses, but, um, it's a lot different than when I was cutting grass because I cut grass in my company too. And back then I was charging like 25 bucks a yard. Now it's like got to be like 40 bucks a yard. And so, and I think grass cutting is great. If you can build the route density and have one after another, after another, you're like a sewing machine. One after like, and you crush it and automatically bill all the customers and you're not stuck talking to all of them. And you set that boundary up front, but you're talking about soft washing and pressure washing, charging, you know, 1200 2400 a whole package $3,600 to clean someone's whole exterior of their house, power off the, you know, the porch, concrete surface, the driveway, and be like, I don't know exactly what you charge, but you or you and another guy you're saying with a $30,000 rig or less can bang all that out in what, a day or half a day and be on to the next job already? By Same having exerted effort, 
maybe even less effort, way higher profit margins. Yeah, I mean about half a day, but if I'm if I'm banging that out in half a day, bud, I'm going to the house. I'm gonna go see my son at three o'clock, go go throw the football. You know what I mean? Like I ain't I ain't going to the next job. Next job's tomorrow. You see, that's the lifestyle. The lifestyle is is is, is where you gotta like come down from this place. It's it's weird. It's almost like a, a a dual personality. It's like you have to have the like the healthy ego to charge what you're what you believe you're worth and you're worth more than you're charging but you also have to say i'm not trying to take over the world with pressure washing <laughs> okay i'm gonna go to the house and throw the football and eat a sandwich you know it's so it's more about crafting a lifestyle than it is trying to just bang everything out you know and, and look we're in a place i have to say we're in a place that has kind of four seasons where it does get cold november december january but Dude, we do not have the frozen tundra that some of you guys have, okay? And where it's like April and it's still maybe a final snow, like that doesn't exist. That's us, bro. A April is everything. Yeah, you know, every everything is blooming in April where I'm at. So you do have to bang it out if you're in an area that does have a long snow season and pressure washing uh, water. You can't spray frozen water, so <laughs> you have to. You would have to bang it out in six months probably where you're at to really make that money. And a lot of guys do that, man. We got no guys up North. They'll hammer it for six months and then they just take off. They stack a bunch of money away and they just take off and build their website and write their content and do all their stuff and get ready for spring. And they hammer it out again, you know? Oh, so it's like a full, a faucet full on and then off. Or are you still talking like, yeah, you've been all through the winter, which is odd. It's like commercial seems to have an infatuation with winter. And I think it's because that's when they, they do their budgets late year. Um, like all the parking garage cleaning I've ever done has always been in like November here. Um, it's wild. So they do their budgets and then they're like, okay, well, we want to spend $15,000, $20,000. Let's get the garage cleaned. It's nasty. We'll go knock out the garage and you know, three days, me and another guy, four days, and there's 20 grand. So that's, you know, that's the idea. The idea isn't to take over the world with pressure washing or take over the world with landscaping. It's to take that money, get your high margins, get your money and put it into other investments, things that are a little more passive. I don't believe in passive income, but a little more passive things that you can watch and, and nurture and watch it bloom and watch it send you checks. And you're not having to just grind it out. I'm not afraid of work. I've worked my whole life, but I'm not trying to work till I die. You see? So that's the idea behind lean and mean. It's crafting a lifestyle, high profits. That's why we say one truck, big profits. That's lean and mean. Lean and mean. And anybody who just joined in, this is Aaron Parker from the lean and mean Academy on YouTube. Check them out. Go subscribe. Oh. Hey man, you have a, uh, uh, you have some, well, Go to his YouTube channel and check it out. But don't you have a you don't you have like a course? I see you pitching it all the time, bro. You said it helped a ton of people. Like you have like students in this course that have anywhere from a guy who's stuck at a desk job to guys who are landscapers to different. What is it? We got all walks of life, man. Which is why we've we've kind of uh, taken that lean and mean principle and really distilled the main movers for marketing, right? For, uh, you know, the chemical knowledge, a lot of that's what applies to us, chemical knowledge, uh, how to use it. Uh, we And we've distilled all of that stuff down. Uh, the certain right pressures that you need to use on certain substrates. I mean, you can destroy stuff in pressure washing. Like you- That's why I, that's why I haven't gone really all Because I all am right. aware that I can destroy somebody's property and then be on a, a hook. And if With my insurance doesn't cover pressure washing and I just destroyed all of somebody's siding, I got a problem. So yeah, yeah, we we've, we've had a course uh, for a couple of years now. We've helped thousands of guys around the globe. Um, we have an inner circle, like a, a mentorship group that we teach. It's in, on Facebook, and we go live in there twice a month and and really hammer out marketing and and it's all under the guise. It's funny. I got a a really good friend of mine. And he has a seven figure pressure washing business, and he'll sit there and tell you. And he's one of the core four. He's one of the mentor, the coaches in the group. 
And he'll sit there and tell you that even him, like he runs lean and mean as a seven figure fresh washing business. So it's about maximizing profits, keeping your prices high, keeping your marketing spin heavy so you can choose the right customers. It's really a paradigm shift. You you said keep your marketing spend heavy. Yes. Okay, so I'm into low cost, no cost, like Jay Conrad Levinson, marketing style tactics, like, well, low cost is bandit signs, uh, door hangers, flyers. So when you say cost, are you talking about investing in things like SEO and Google ads? Yes. Can and you do a quick know. rapid fire of some ideas or for people that are like, okay, now tell me the marketing, like just rapid fire a bunch of shit right now, dog? Well, yeah. look, a lot of guys, I don't ever shit on bandit signs, okay? Like I'm not ever going to no. shit. All marketing works. My favorite marketing is Google. Okay. My favorite marketing is SEO. It's something that I've had the chance to master over years of study. And it's one of those things that is, is actually almost free and passive. We have a meme in the inner circle that says year two hits different because year one with a website, uh, if they're doing the right things, yeah, you're going to get some leads. You're going to get some stuff, but year two, is where you can almost run your whole business straight off of uh, Google SEO. And uh, door hangers do still work. All of it works, but you're going to have to ask yourself, how much sweat do you want to put out? You know, five rounds, they work. All this stuff works. But I'm, I always focus on becoming omnipresent with my Google profile and with my website because that thing is working for me an hour and a half away or, or 30 minutes away in a high-end area of town that I'm just not going to go hang door hangers. In. I'm just not today. I'm not going to do it. You see what I mean? So it's like, how do I be, how do I leverage what is given to me? What is almost free, which is Google plus a website. You got to pay for a website, optimize the content, become known, become renowned worldwide for something, right? I'm always trying to get worldwide traffic over local traffic to my website. How do I do that? I write articles Okay, I write articles where I answer all the customers questions and I'm going to give you the this is like the gold. If you just do this, no one on this feed is going to do this. And that's why I continue to win. But if you do it, I hope you do it. All right. I hope you implement it. Like I just made a video today on my channel and I said, I think five people have taken my advice and they're all just crushing it. But no one wants to go to work. If you'll go to work, this is what you should do. You need to find the questions the customer asks, and you need to reverse engineer that into an article that the world can read. Stop writing in technical terms. The customer doesn't care what size GPM your pressure washer is or how much pressure. Doesn't care that you got a 30 horsepower Kohler on your Gravely. Doesn't care. All right. They don't care. So what you need to do is write the article as if the customer was going to go do the job themselves. This is where contractors get up in arms. Why would I tell the customer how to do it? Otherwise, they'll just do it and they won't hire me. Incorrect. People who have money are not going to go out there and lay borders around a flower bed. Ain't going to happen. And if they do, they're not your customer. All right? I don't want to work for the people who are out there helping me. You know that, right? You don't want the customer who's following you around the yard. I don't want them. So if she gets the value out of that and she's like, hey, Keith just taught me how to do this. And she's in Florida and she's like, Keith taught me how to do this one certain landscaping technique and how to build this bed or how to build this thing. And I'm going to go do it myself. Great. Don't call me. I want the person, I call her Janet. My avatar is Janet in a G-Wagon. She has a little dog. It's a little dog. Like you got a little dog. She got that little dog. She got a coffee. And she's got a an iPhone, right? And a checkbook. She got, she got it all. And she's got a G-Wagon. And her husband's got the money and so does she. And so she says, this is my avatar. I know who she is. I know who she is to a T. She says, what, what is it called? He said, it's pressure washing. Just Google them and call somebody, call the first guy who's got the best reviews. Perfect. Pressure washing. And, me, right? it's, oh. and she says, how much is it? Okay. It's going to be 4,500 to do 
The entire backstone, if you want to do the house, that'll be another 1800 If you want to do that, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, we want to do the backstone of the house and maybe the front patio. All right, cool. I'll just throw that little patio on for free. Boom, 5600 on the day, whatever, right? So that's how quick the right customer signs off on the deal. Yeah, they want to throw their money at the problem Dude, they, yeah. just so they can get it done. Bro, when you get and you start hanging out with those people, okay, and I'm a part of a club here in Nashville, and, and I was lucky to become a part, and I was putting I, – I was I paid to be a part, okay, but it, what it did was got me around – the right people who have way more money than me. And I started watching how they operate. And these are yeah. guys from multimillionaires to there's a few billionaires in the club. Now the billionaires aren't here all the time. They're flying all over the place, but they are members. And so when I'm there, I'm just hanging out on a Thursday and everybody's entrepreneurs. Everybody's got money. I'm watching how they spend and the right people who have the money, they don't push back. They go, how much is it going to be? Okay, well, when can you do it is the question. That's the right question. And they say, can you do it next week? Excellent. <laughs> Let's do the deal. They, You've done so much work with the customer on the front end as far as garnering the trust, as far as speaking as if, as far as talking in a certain way. Wallace Waddles talks about this in The Science of Getting Rich. If you don't have it, read that book. Go read The Science of Getting Rich. It's a great book. He talks about speaking and walking in the certain way. So and this is all part of marketing. Everything you're saying, the way you're being, the way you're talking, and, and all the way from the way the customer perceives it before they pick up the phone and the way that you pick up the phone and talk on the phone and the way you present yourself, even in person, all if you have to do an in-person quote, it, uh, mar everything is marketing. All of it. Every right. piece. It's all. I don't do very much for very long that's not on purpose. It's all cohesive and there's rails up on it. it. means you don't do this stuff, you do this. And it's systematized and it's the same way over and over with that specific customer avatar that you describe who's Janet in the G-Wagon with the little dog, the Mercedes, the iPhone, and the checkbook. Yeah. She's got money. Her husband's got money. They They're busy. They don't got to. They, they want to get it done by the best contractor with the most reviews who, who they just know. They don't even want to do all the – they just know that – and they they want to pay the extra because they don't want the the fucking hassle. They'd they rather pay extra. They're not your broke uncle. A lot of you guys are selling like you're selling to your broke uncle. You know the guy who's always kind of negative at the cookout. Like, yeah, with the beer hat. To that guy, these people who are the right people, they just buy. They're like, look, man, you're the guy. How do I give you money? Are you willing to take it? Is the question. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, they want to give you their money. Are you willing to take it? And that is where the self esteem, we talked about the 85% of it, is all here. Because perception is reality when it comes to value. I know a lot of guys in pressure washing, landscape, whatever trade would sit there and say, I would never spend three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a Rolls Royce. Four hundred thousand on a Rolls. Keep going, right? On a Rolls Royce. Yeah. Well, the issue is my customers do. See, it's not not everyone is living where you are in your broke mind. There are people who have money, and they want to give it to you for an excellent job. And a lot of you guys who are watching this right now, you will do an excellent job. You know that. You know, you want to show up on time. You want to do it. The problem is you don't have the self-esteem to lock down the other half to charge what you're worth. You're doing all the stuff already that Chuck in a truck won't do. Have insurance, show up on time, do a great job, guarantee your work. Bro, you're the yeah. top 1% already. And your website matches your Google, which matches your social media, which matches everything to your uniforms, the way you talk on the phone, your presentation. The CRM that you use to communicate in the email, everything makes sense. They're all trust indicators. They all indicate, they're called uh, trust signals. They're these unconscious things that, that the customer, they just know that they're in the right place. It's called preeminent strategy where you position yourself as the obvious choice. They don't want to go anywhere else. Jay Abraham, that's good. I like that. Yeah, I love Jay Abraham. He's the top <laughs> secret, bro. Yeah, but so you're exactly... A lot you of know what? Thank you for reminding me real quick because... I, I like to give credit where credit's due. 
and I get so obsessed with stuff sometimes, and I slipped on that. So thank you for bringing no, no, it. No. It's probably so ingrained in you that it, do, it doesn't matter. But I do. I was just giving a tip of the hat because I do like to Abraham as well. So if anybody watching this, go go watch it. They, you know, sometimes that stuff, Keith, that you learn that really has changed your life. It just becomes a part of you, and it just oozes from your verbs. You're you're just talking it right. And so, no, don't worry about all that. But the thing, man, you have to learn, like you're saying, yes, all of that is cohesive. Yes. Do you need to invest in your website? Yes. All of that stuff. Yes. SEO is valuable. And if you're not going to learn it, guess what? You get to pay for it. There's no other way out. All right. So you, you choose it. If you're going to learn it, it's a long road. It, it'll be a skill you can keep. If you're going to pay for it, it's be a lot quicker, a lot less painful of the learning process but that's the thing you really have to you have to buy into the fact that you're worth it man that's the key and i hate to say that because look dude, i'm from alabama we don't believe in that juju okay i mean like oh you're worth it yeah believe in yourself but a lot of it is how you walk it's all about uh here's here's a good one for the guys here's how i operate with customers i obviously want the job if it's a good job but I have to treat it like the customer is I'm courting a beautiful woman. OK, I can't be I can't be too interested. I got to be interested because I got to seal the deal because I am interested, but I can't be too interested because it turns them off. So how do I not be too interested? The way I do it is I lead the customer. OK, I ask a lot of questions and I don't. Let them lead me through their property. I am the expert. We call it the white lab coat. I wear the white lab coat. I have the stethoscope around my neck. I diagnose your property. You don't tell me because you call me. I'm the expert. You don't tell me what you think about it. Now, you can tell me what you might want to see. I'm going to tell you how that's going to come to pass. All right. And I'm going to ask you, what is the most important thing to you about cleaning this property? That's an odd question. It would be amazing the gold that you get when you ask that. What is the most important thing to you about this landscaping job? What's the most important thing? They're going to tell you some shit you would have never thought you got. And they're just giving you gold. Really? Explain to me why is, you know, I just want to know why is that the most important thing? That's an interesting thing. And they're going to tell you more about their emotional attachment to this important thing. She just gave you the sales pitch. All you do is regurgitate for her back what she says in a solution-oriented framework, and then you just write it out and say, well, this is how much it's going to cost to get the back patio clean to where it doesn't smell like mildew anymore. When do you want to schedule? Yeah. Spin selling. You just like don't, you don't stop trying to prove to the customer that you're, you're great. Walk like you're great, man. They so, call and you. All of this should they be done through you. the lens the entire time. If the customer has an emotional attachment that, of course, someone's lawn needs to be cut. If they got mildew all over the house, it, it probably has to be done. But a lot of this is actually a luxury service. Sure. And that's what blew my mind. Is like, So these customers that you're talking about that are upper echelon, uh, upper middle class or high class people that can afford to spend money on a luxury service, because they're not in survival mode, they're looking at the mildew on the house or what needs to be done with the landscaping and it's bothering them because they want their, they, they want their, a lot of these people have their shit together and they want their environment to be beautiful. So they're willing to spend the money. And so I grew up poor as shit. We've lived in like 32 homes. I've slept on couches and we finally got approved for government section eight housing. When I was a little kid, my mom, and we lived in a little tiny cinder block house with no air conditioning. And it was yellow cinder blocks. It was, it was like, like a bomb shelter or something. I don't know. It was hot as hell in there. I was sweating in July. I just lay on the floor. Mom, it's hot. She's like, turn on the fan. Still hot. Take a shower. <laughs> I already took three. Go in the fridge. There's no milk in the fridge. D dishes are piled up to the ceiling with flies flying around it. Fucking, we were broke. Awesome. So, anyway. <laughs> what? You, mm -hmm. You'll see. You'll start quoting your customers like that and you'll start having this pity party in your mind for the customer. And it's like the customer mm -hmm. understand that rich people buy not for you. They buy for themselves. And what I mean by that is they're 
they want to pay full price because of their own self-esteem. Yes. They, they're, they're not interested in the cheap. Like I've had guys be like, dude, you were like 800 bucks more than everybody else. He goes, mm-hmm. but we're going with you. And it's, it's because those guys, a Dan Kennedy would say cocktail stories, which is a big deal. He wants to tell the guys at the golf course that he just spent $5,000 to clean his house. Like that's what he, he, he likes saying that. All right. It's like when you buy, when the, uh, there's a guy who details Ferraris and Rolls Royce, he charged like a hundred thousand dollars to detail. It's a cocktail story. It's them sitting at the golf course and say, Hey dude, I just had this guy come to my house and you know, my 488, not my 458, but my 488. I had him do my 488. It cost me, guess how much this dude charge? I go, how much? This hundred thousand dollars, bro. Come on, man. And they, they love it. So he loved there. It's a different group of humans. It's a status you, play, bro. Absolutely. It's a status play. So there, that's present too. But a lot of this can all be encompassed into one thing. It's walking in a certain way. Read the science of getting rich by Wallace Waddles. And when he says walking in the certain way, because that's a weird line. And I, I struggled with that line for years. He means wearing the lab coat. Walk like you're going to have it and don't be too needy. I want to do the job for you. I would like to date you, but I'm not going to wait around for another 10 minutes. All right. You got 10 minutes. You come with me. We're going on a date or I'm going to the house. That's how you have to be with the customer. I want to do it for you, but I'm not tied to the outcome of this interaction. I'm not emotionally tied. I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's funny. I have done thousands and thousands of, uh, obviously, quotes and property walks with customers. And I used to be the guy who would want to tell them the story of how I just started this business and, and I just got engaged and and, blah, and and like to try to build this rapport, to build a relationship. So I felt like they knew me and, and like they wanted to support my small business and it actually worked. But I attracted a certain type of customer who wanted to talk about that stuff. And as time went by and I raised my prices and I learned my worth more, I got a lot more short with customers and more to the facts and more like actually 100% about them. I don't even talk about myself at all. And it's it's about them and walking the property, diagnosing their problem to see what they need to get them a quote as quickly as possible. And I'm not showing up and driving across town to talk and hang out. I'm showing up to collect a deposit check. Amen. I want a 50 to print or, or a 33, depending on the gym. I think it's pouring rain here in Michigan. Um, I can hear the rain. So I'm showing up to collect a deposit check. And that's how I qualify over the phone now. Like, why the hell would I go sit in traffic and drive across town just to go give somebody my time? You know, so like the worthiness issue is a huge thing. And you're talking about with, with marketing, you're taking it to a whole nother level. Like you're the dude in the, in the lab coat with the stethoscope diagnosing their problem so when you talk about like one truck big profits and the lean and mean academy you take that and you squeeze every ounce of juice and then you even put the uh there's this emergent type of property on top of it you're talking about your customers bragging about that at the golf course how they just spent so much money on stuff like it's a status play to them so how do you cross that bridge you said it's worth it to drive to go find those really high end primo drop jobs where you're getting those crazy high uh, jobs with a high profit margin. So what are the identifiers or the signals that allow you to say, that's my customer. And how do you, how do you uh, kind of like upgrade your messaging and your marketing and everything? Or like, so you specifically get more of those customers and less of the ones that you don't want. Well, I'm just going to here to tell you, yeah. It, even if you target that group, you're still going to get, you know, other customers. All right. I'm not sitting here saying that you're going to be exclusive to the, you know, the, the country club. Now, um, how do you, you need to get around those people. A, you need to learn about how to keep talking to everybody. I have to go fix something real quick. I don't normally do, but I'll, write, I'll be right back. Keep going. What's up guys. All right. So how do you do that? You have to, you have to figure out how those people speak. And the only way to figure out how they speak, how they talk about things is you have to find a way to get around them. 
Okay, where is that? It might be paying for a golf uh, a golf membership. I can't believe you would pay two hundred dollars a month or whatever it is for a golf. I can't believe I pay a lot more than that to be a part of the clubs I'm part of. But what it's going to do is it's going to give you a new language. It's going to give you a new language. And when it comes to you're talking about targeting SEO, that's going to be challenging because SEO, a lot of it, unless you're going to optimize straight for that area or that region or that city, which you can, of course you can. Um, Google My Business is very proximity based. So you have to watch out for that. You're thinking that you're going to you're going to. You're going to be 30 minutes away and you're going to rank with a Google My Business uh, for something 30 minutes. That's not going to happen. You're not going to rank out there. So you're going to have to find a way in. You're, and a lot of that is is how they speak, getting around them into clubs, sponsoring events where they are and being able to have a chance to be present in the room with a reason. OK, to speak to them. Um that's my way. Uh, the it, Google My Business is very weird, Keith. I was just telling them this is that it, it's very proximity based. So I can't sit there and tell you that if you're 30 minutes away from the expensive area and you're in like the rural part of town, like you're either going to have to get a location there close by something like that. Um, or uh, you're going to have to find a way into some of these clubs, into some of these golf events, something. You got to get around the money. Um, that's the only way. Obviously, you can do uh, targeted EDDM stuff. You could do targeted, you know, Google ad stuff. Of course, do all of that. But I'm talking about organic SEO. Google My Business is very proximity based, meaning how close you are to the search, to the searcher. If G Wagon Janet is 30 minutes away, well, there's probably a guy or three who are closer to that area of town than you. So how you're going to have to at that is you're going to either have to build out your content to where you're ranking on some worldwide stuff. Okay. So you're, you're doing what I said earlier in the live. All right. Where you start pushing your authority for your site to the top of Google for the area. Okay. Then you'll be able to possibly take on some of those people or you continually push your Google reviews, you're responding to it, you're optimizing your Google My Business profile, and you're focused on SEO in the same time. Okay, you're constantly posting. Google is very cool now with the G, uh, GBP. That's what they call it, Google Business Profile. They changed the acronym on me. Um, where the posts last for 30 days. They used to only last for seven days. So I would say um, get some type of recurring system that's allowing you to post you know, a couple, three times a week, or even once a day, just, you know, just a couple times a week at, at, in the least. Oh, I'm on there. Just like social media, I'm on Google Maps. I'm posting shit. I'm asking customers to take pictures of us and our work with the reviews and then posting little video clips of the guys working and doing deals and shit. Like, it just becomes part of the repertoire of what you, what you do on a daily, not daily, but as soon as it comes to mind, I do it right then and there. But what you're asking is, how do I get into those areas? First is proximity. Okay. That's with Google business profile. I'm in the heart of my city. So I live not downtown, but I live pretty close to downtown. So my proximity is very close to the center of the city. So I got a nice little radius for about 20 minutes out, which means there's a lot of people within that 20 minutes. But if I was in, you know, out 30 minutes out into the woods, it's going to be hard for my house to rank in the city if I'm going up with against a guy who's like me, who's already. Well, what if you were showing results in advance and posting pictures of those high end type of properties on your Google My Business and on your website and on your social media of the type of properties that you do? So when those customers see it, they go, oh, that's a nice, big, beautiful home, million dollar house just like mine. They do my type of work. They do my type of shit. That's one thing that I've been failing and I need to uh, uh, pick up my game because we do some of these really nice properties and I'm like, damn, I should have done before and after photos and did a nice photo shoot of this epic property. So it resonates with that type of customer base and post that on the social media as well. You could have done two articles for that. You could have done a local based article, right? Mm -hmm. With the keywords targeting, uh, geo targeted to local. Okay. And then you 
you post out the job and what happened. We call them project pages. Those are very important. Um, or, and you could also take that, take those photos, rewrite the article and do a how to article for the exact job that you did. So what we would do is we would do our, uh-huh. key, we would reverse engineer down to the exact phrase that a customer potential in the world, right? Not where you're going to get my notepad. <laughs> and then we would say, okay, well, you know, I mean, Keith, what did you do for that customer? And then I'll give you the title of the article. <laughs> All right. So wait, wait, wait. What did you do for that customer? And then I'll, I'll give you the title. That customer that you were talking about with the really nice property. Everybody here on this live, uh, plug your ears right now. This is my shit, dog shit. You don't have to tell them where it was. You don't have to tell them the name. What'd you, what'd you do? No, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're giving great ass tips and I'm sitting here taking notes and this is my live stream. <laughs> the, uh, I understand the power of SEO. Andrew and Collins. you can share the blog article on Facebook, on Inst- uh, Instagram, like a clip linking back to your link tree. You can share it on Twitter. You're going to share it anywhere. You can share it out to your entire your email list. Uh, we write a monthly blog article. We have been for years. And um, all right. What what was the job? What did you do? What was the actual job? Oh, well, this are you asking for real? We did. The, uh, how about this one job it was a high end property. We came in, we did all the shrub trimming. We got the property maintenance, trim the ornamental trees, ripped out, replaced the Miss Kim lilac tree that was dying and, you know, backfilled it with compost and basically fertilized it. Then we did mulch, edged out the garden beds, and then we uh, we elevated these spruce trees that, and cleaned them up that were overhanging the sidewalk that people couldn't walk past. And Bro, they wanted to come back. Got, got like six articles here, dude. So what was the lilac tree? What was that? It's a Miss Kim Lilac, which is basically, it's like a, uh, this is going to sound really, really weird. What is the, what is the weird thing that the aliens supposedly do to people when then they take, and then they cross pollinate humans and it, it's a hybrid, hybrid. Oh, you. <laughs> they All right. It's it's a hybrid of two different. Oh, it's a hybrid. So what okay. did you do with this, this lilac? <laughs> so. Some of these customers, they have sentimental value to their ornamental trees, right? And we, when we specialize in ornamental tree trimming, sometimes they want, if the shit's dying, and we can maybe, say, go find an arborist or, or get a tree injection, or if it's got a mulch volcano, we got to pull off and we clean, and we, like, we, we, we get it nice and dry by pulling off the excess soil to expose the root flare around it and the collar and see if that works. But... If the thing's dying, we basically can rip it out, remove it, and plant the same exact thing. So is that transplanting? I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. Transplanting about. is when you move someplace, something from one place to another. And what would this, what's the technical term of this? And then I'll make it elementary. What what's the technical term for what you did? I mean, I just call it an R and R, a rip out and replace. Okay. So let's just call it transplant. All right. Because that's fine. Or doesn't know what that's what that is all right they they don't know that they don't know all the technical stuff so we would just say how to transplant a blah, blah, lilac tree and that would be an, a whole article okay like bro we would get so much traffic from all the little old ladies out there who are thinking they want to do this they don't want to do it but we're going to get oh, all Oh, I know where you're going with this. I keep going. So we're going to write it all out. We're going to write. And I'm going to look. You got a ton of articles in this one job. This is just one article. So how to transplant. This is definitely what, you know, old lady Miss Betty's going to going to search. I'm just trying to get her to the page so she stays a long time. Old lady Miss Betty who owns a G-Wagon and a little dog who's got a fat checkbook. Well, listen, here's what I'm saying. And a million dollar property. I want to get all these old ladies around the globe who are interested. Oh, you're okay. Okay. I want them to stay for a minimum of like two to three minutes on your website reading this okay. article. Oh, I got you. Okay. Global. Now I see. So as I get this global traffic, all right, 
my local authority goes where? It goes up because I got global traffic. So I'm writing how to transplant a SEO like hack. It's a white hat SEO hack because it's totally legit. You're damn right. Ain't nobody going to do that. It doesn't matter. I could literally scream this from the rooftops and no one would do it. It doesn't matter. That's what I've learned. I've learned I could just say it on live on YouTube. And there's like two guys watching right now. And this is a bet. I want you to actually do it. But I guarantee you two people watching are going to just maybe do it. Dude, I've read SEO for bloggers by RL Adams and SEO Black Book. And I, and, and, uh, Reputation Repair, and he, that was a good one too. And another one, I've read like a bunch of R.L. Adams books and a bunch of like just obsessed with the shit. And he's never talked about this. Of course not. But that, dude, that's just one piece. So you were telling me like I lost track because I'm ADD. So I like I locked in on the lilac. Local traffic goes up. Local authority goes up. Writing the article about the Miss Cam Lilac, how to tr how to do that. But now you, as your service business, are getting local market authority on Google. Damn pushed right. up in the Google three pack dog. That's right, baby. So what happens when your authority, so what happens on Google when Google says, well, dang, man, they got global traffic. They got like people all over the world coming to this website. What's going to do? What's going to happen locally, bro? You know, your competition ain't doing shit. Okay. They ain't doing shit. I guarantee you they haven't updated the site. They ain't touching an article. They're not doing anything, bro. So this is the key. Yes, Kyle asks, you write this article, and here's why. If you try to hire an author, okay, yeah, I know some of you boys want to go to Fiverr. I've had about eight different article writers. I I've, know I've, I've, I've been through the gamut, bro. 30 bucks. No, nah, you're trying to you're trying to get out of it. So you're already trying to skirt. All right. You got to write it because only you know. The, the technical language, all right, that needs to go in there. And what you're going to do is, this is very simple. You're just going to teach them exactly how to do it. And Chad GPT cannot write it for you. It can't write it for you. And FYI, guys, for you guys trying to just write your articles via Chat GPT, Google very much knows that you are running AI and writing articles with AI. But then you can run it through the CopyScape AI rewriter. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, they've definitely are ahead of that too. You got to put your personal touch on this. Okay. And I'm not saying you got to talk about all the coniferous, blah, blah, blah. All hey, this I got to come clean real quick on something. I get it. Look, everybody's done it. Everybody's done no, it. No, no, no. I, so I, the chat GTP, I went nuts. I was overwhelmed, bro. I straight up like have subscribed to multiple uh, AI software programs. I've got a teleprompter in front of a camera. Check. You, when you guys hear this, you be like, "Oh my god!" But check. dude, I got like camera gear, teleprompter, all this shit. So I chat GDP, give me like, oh, give me you know, give me like ten ideas for how to start a landscaping business. Blah 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 for this. So for this YouTube channel, and then I would print it all out. I said, "Okay, chat GDP, now rewrite those articles as a, a twenty five hundred word blog article with a call to action at the end in the style of Dan Kennedy." <laughs> writes it. I said, now I want you to rewrite all of that as a YouTube video script. <laughs> YouTube video script. I take the script and I put it inside of a teleprompter software that frees and recognizes my voice and stops when I stop and goes when I go. And then I upload it into the teleprompter software and put the camera on me. And then I just press play. And then I just like, what's up? Today I'm going to talk about how to. And I and I did this for real. And I felt really uncomfortable because I am real and I really do. Run. But there was something completely cold and digital and there was no spirit and no Keith Kelfus in it even, even though it was great for prompting great ideas sure. it was just very cold and I was like dude this is going to like destroy my whole YouTube channel it's like it's good for prompts and ideas but you got to do the real shit yourself because your heart your passion they interview uh, Dane Cook was on the Ed Milet podcast uh, a few like it was like six months ago now and dane cook has been like a worldwide famous comedian he's packed stages all over the world he's funny he's an actor is the guy's like and he said one thing amazing he said all this new technology and all this new social media stuff he goes the one big golden nugget secret is there's got to be some passion in there and he's like and if it's you and if it's passionate 
I think, and you feel your self worth, that's the thing that will make it work. And that's the thing that will make your business and your marketing and all these things is when you have real passion, because that's the glue that makes all this other shit stick together. So anyways, uh, keep going, man. I got another. No, that's exactly have to you have to write the article you have to write the details into the article for the step by step especially like with pressure washing the hardest thing is you know obviously guys are out there trying it and yeah you're trying to outsource that you know your your writer in Pakistan does not know the ratios of chemicals that and how they need to be mixed in order to do that and that's why the magic is within you is because you do and you're telling the customer, and where are they going to stop on that article whenever they're reading it? They're scrolling down. They're going to hit that step by step, and they're going to go, "Holy shit!" He's saying ten to one, and they're just going to sit. And that's what I want. I want them to live on that article for a minimum of three minutes. I need them to write. They're writing on their notes, looking at the screen. They're taking notes on my article, and Google knows, bro. They know. They know if you've written a little 500 word dinky article with no content, they know, they know. And that's why those don't rank. Cause everything is like heat mapped, right? They could tell when you're pausing, stopping oh, yeah. where the eyeballs are, where they're touching. And then they take all that inside the, the algorithm and they can tell, and then they could rank it based, based off what is organic, real customer feedback from real IP addresses, judging behavior. Cause Google's designed to give a great user experience. So anything that's fluff just gets flushed and sandboxed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm reading the comments here. Um, no, so that's, that's exactly what you have to do. I think if, if guys will implement that, it, it's not a short term strategy. It's, it's long term. Um, but I guarantee you it is, it is for sure. It is for sure. Like it's no question. If you do this, you will crush the market. All right. But I just know 95% are not going to do it. How and, many words do you think this article should be? If it's a guide, I I always would a say guide. No. Okay. I like guides to be two to three thousand words. Okay? okay. Google loves long form content. They love mm -hmm. long form content. Everyone was wanted to say, you know how this thing is. Oh, everyone's so ADD nowadays. It's like, no, they're not. Here's the thing. What percentage of like keyword density and clickable links and URL and how many how, like what's the difference between like would be qualified as keyword stuffing according to like the panda and pag the panda penguin and Don't hummingbird worry. algorithm updates. Don't you worry know? about it. you know when you're doing it. Just don't do it. All right. Okay. You know if you're writing how to transmit a lilac tree. Oh, how to transmit a lilac tree. <laughs> uh, the, the odd thing about having to transmit a lilac tree. It's like, stop, Google, just write natural, be, uh, be very informative, give them the gold, give them, give them away the secret. It's like, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this around the edges of the lilac tree. First thing, second thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to take the roots. We're going to remove the root ball. If that's what you did, right? If there's a root ball present, this is how you have to handle it. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just, but I'm giving them the secrets. So the, the step by step and all the action steps of how to do it, and in about two to three hundred uh, word thousand words, and and what about like the call to action at the end and linking back to the website or social media? What percentage of authority domains should be linked back, or is it, or is it just to position yourself, or this is just to get global traffic? I never do a local call to action ever. Okay, so but this is housed on your website. Mm -hmm. yes. What website builder do you use? I use Footbridge Media. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know. Those are great guys. You already know. That. They do all my stuff. <clears throat> Keith, you got a link for that. I got a link for that. Yeah, Keith I'll put it in the link in the description below after this video. Give it like 20 minutes. So you guys can check it out. So when you write this article in your, it's being housed on your domain for your service business in the blog section, correct? Yes. Because it's attached to your... SEO, it'll rank on Google SERPs? Correct. Like, everything I'm saying is a bunch of shit that I've read, and I do it, and I'm not a fucking ex SEO expert, but I'm trying to ask qualified questions so I can learn the best that I can. Yeah, here's the thing. It, you cannot give less than a thousand words, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you really need to understand, like, do your research on 
a lilac tree and why it may be troublesome to transplant. Okay. Will it die if you take it out? If a certain time of year, do you not want to take it out in, in, in the spring? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know anything about what I'm talking about. I know a customer would need to know this. Okay. I know, but the whole overarching topic is how to transplant a lilac tree. So, but you need to give her the timing. You can't transplant it in July. Guys, you just don't. And why do you not? Okay. So like who, what, why, where, when? And why not? And the cost of inaction. So, so, so that's I, one thing I'm answering within this. So if guys are struggling to write. Okay. Oh, I'm legit. I'm in the park. I'm literally driving through the drive through at Tim Hortons to get a coffee. And I'm not like typing while I'm driving. But when I'm in the drive through, I'm literally fucking typing a blog article or doing talk to text and Google Docs and getting as much of it as I can and then sitting and pulling over and then putting it inside of my web software so I can have a blog. And the problem is sometimes it looks like it's, it's legible, but it looks like a third grader wrote it. And sure. I've had to do a lot of work studying copy, copywriting, proper grammar. You can get an app called Grammarly. Go to Grammarly.com and you can install this app for free on your phone. It's a, it's a Grammarly keyboard and it senses everything and gives you auto suggestions of what to do and what not to do. And so your grammar looks more professional because you have a bunch of misspellings inside of your blog and run on sentences. It'll be a poor user experience on Google, which could possibly demote the blog article because it's, it's not. So another thing you could do is go on... Would you hire a professional editor to look at it? Do you have anybody else on your team? Because what about people I who really, don't? As close to possible at like a fourth grade, third grade reading level. I want it almost like so simple. It's painful for you to write it because that's what our favorite thing to do is as contractors is mm -hmm. to go wants to complicate things because that's the doing more. But I'm like, too afraid to do it. So I go learn more about it. <laughs> that's right you know we're like yeah, and then technically here's it's like no 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 make it super simple make it a fourth grade reading level my girlfriend she's great at editing so she could do it you could you could find an editor i mean an editor is something that you could probably outsource you know like they'll grammatically make it right and that's all you want the key is the gold the gold there is a gold to everything and what I mean by gold is the mix of the ratios. There is a way to transplant and there's a wrong way to transplant that will kill the plant. All right. So you got to find out what's the main mover. What is the big thing that they cannot do or this whole thing falls apart? All right. What is that? And you need to step by step walk them through that. So I would like like the five the three mistakes to avoid when transplanting a Miss Kim lilac tree, or or when trying to power wash your own house or clean mildew off your siding, or when you're doing a landscape job. If you're if you're a customer even thinking about doing a retaining wall yourself, you're probably not my customer at all because you said before earlier that the type of customers you're going to have a retaining wall done or something, they've just people that got money that they've already maybe been through all that in their life and they just want to throw you know. 15 grand at the problem or something and hire a professional no, contract. You write that article because I want authority to that page for my installations locally. So I want to get global traffic for installing a retaining wall. All right. And the way I do that is by writing a major article about how to install a retaining wall on a hill. This is a weird, very common thing. Okay. Not just how to install a a, a retaining wall because I guarantee you Bob Vila or this old house owns the top of the search for how to install a retaining wall. They have mm -hmm. way too much authority. You're going up against Goliath. Don't do that. Right. How to install a retaining wall on a hill. And that's the article because that's very searched because a lot of people have hills. A lot of people want retaining walls on those hills. So it's, that's the one and you will get all of that traffic. Do you see how I like, I identified the time, identified like Sorry. the Goliath. I'm not going to go up against somebody who's like Bob Vila, this old house. See what I'm saying? That's too much authority. You're, you're going to be competing for scraps. Yes. All right. Quick Southeast so Soft Launch gave five bucks on a super chat. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. So what? I said Southeast Soft, Southeast Soft Wash just sent five bucks on a super chat. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. We thank you. 
So you're giving me all these ideas, dude. We're like doing spring cleanups, fall cleanups. We're deadheading hydrangeas. We're trimming huge, large arborvitae shrubs around customers' pools. We're ripping out and redoing and reinstalling landscaping and making sure that we take all the gutters and do buried gutter downspouts with four inch PVC pipe and elbows with weep drains. However, it, that's how I do it to make sure that the excess I don't water. Weep drain. What? So it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. But so so so, this, so it doesn't back up in the winter and cause ice and then you know possibly break or flood their basement. It's doing everything proper the white the right way and charging them for it and making them uh, aware of it the first time and letting them know that like we're going to destroy their yard, but it's in their bill that we're charging an extra couple hundred bucks to fix the grass from the machine tracks or something like, like and and I could take pictures and make before, during, and after pictures and make a well worded blog post article, but like but to like a general homeowner base, but just have it housed on my website so it gets. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make this about me. I'm just having some epiphanies and I, I'm taking notes, bro. It's like, shit, dog. <laughs> shit, dog. Let's go. <laughs> I never thought. Oh, do you see how, like your entire project? You did like, you did like 20 things in one bill, one invoice. All right. But there's also like 10 articles in there. So the first article I'm going to do. I'm going to shut down my whole landscape business to fucking write articles all day, bro. <laughs> The first article I'm going to do is going to encompass probably 3,000 words on how to do the entire project, right? Just the entire project. Then I'm going to have probably five to seven supporting articles that are going to link back to that. One Wait a okay, we're doing that in our blog now. Just listen. How I'm to listening. train a lilac tree, all right? That's one thing. You were talking about like wheat drains or some shit. How to install the water. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're doing. I know how I'd write the content though. But how to install a wheat drain. Perfect. I would have another one. You you got like seven things that happened in that one day. And you took all these photos, right? Like you got a lot of content there. And I know guys, it can sound overwhelming. And so I don't want it to be that way. You don't have to make Oh, 10 articles for one. Just write the first one, man. Just write the first article. Okay. Just like get one up. You know, what James I mean? Clear in the book Atomic Habits, he talks about it's not about like doing the work, it's just getting yourself to start. <laughs> so set the bar really low and say, hey, I'm just gonna write one paragraph. Dude, I'm I resonate with that so heavy because you know, everybody wants to talk about peak performance. And I know hustle culture has been a big thing, at least for the past two decades. It seems to be wearing off a bit, but that's not me, man. Like I get that sometimes it's really hard. It's really hard to start, you know, and you just gotta start writing one. And guess what? Your first one's not gonna be as good as your tenth one. All right. But just begin. Start to enjoy the process. And I'm telling you, bro. Next spring, here's the issue with SEO. <laughs> Next spring, you're going to see the difference, all right? Cody on Southeast Softwash is funny because I do his SEO. I, I run all of his stuff, and we've quadrupled the revenue on the website since last year. So I do all of that content. I do all all the stuff. for. I have a team that's doing the content, but I, I'm kind of the – I'm the orchestrator behind what they're doing. But it's like we've quadrupled that since last year. So I will tell you, in the in the tune of some guys, it's hundreds of. So thousands. you're you're hooking your website, and your blog, you're running all through Google Analytics, and you're doing, uh, you know, uh, you got that dashboard up, or do you have like an internal analytics? So basically, if somebody wants to hook up a, uh, Google Analytics, you got, or you can, if you're running ads, you would do Google, Google Tag Manager. There's a bunch of them, but you basically get the snippet code address and put it inside the HTML of your website whatever website software you have and then it pings back and forth and then it basically pulls the data from your website you can pull up the analytics dashboard and see your traffic where it's coming from where the traffic like your 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 acquisition and um but my blog right now is actually it's bombing i might get i don't know what i'm getting it could be as low as it's embarrassing bro like under 2000 views a month on my blog and all on social media like we got like 13 million views last month and we're writing a monthly blog article. And I, I just hired an SEO expert on upwork.com. I'm paying this guy 75 bucks an hour and he's already helped me with a lot of shit with the 404 errors and broken links. We're going through and running a screaming sure. frog on and an SEM rush. Uh, but I want to know how come my blog isn't blowing up and getting national? Like, what am I doing wrong? How come we're, 
we're typing well worded 1500 word minimum uh Here's, is because first the first kill of a national blog and this isn't like hard and fast rule but this is something i never do i never add a local call to action on this blog i never add a phone number at the bottom if you need blah 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 give us a call i no never because to google when they crawl that page and i'm not saying some of this stuff can't rank nationally if there's no competition for that topic, you may see this. Topic. I did have one blow up. I wrote a, a article, a whole article about window cleaning, and it's it's not page one of Google, but it's definitely it's like page two or three. My blog article pops up right there. It could have been pushed down since then. So I'm if talking about cleaning guy. Huh? I would say what is the what is the topic? Um, how to clean, how to clean, how to clean French panes, how to clean a storm windows without breaking the storm window. Right. Like how there's oh, certain, so because it's a it's a it's just a big general topic and to say it's nationally, they're gonna push it out. But if you got a local call to action, then that tells the algorithm, oh, this is local. It just local. it's it, so if you got like imagine like a library with a bunch of books A through Z and different topics, like you walk through a bookstore. And it goes, instead of it being like the whole bookstore and a big ass sign of like a topic, like this is like the drama section. It yeah, just, and that's why this is like some of this stuff is going to be two to three thousand words. I'm two trying to three thousand words of okay. it. Get the content as a guide and get it beyond because look, everyone look, there's guys watching this right now and here's what they're going to do. And this is great for everyone who doesn't do this. They're Take this advice and they're going to go and they're going to write 500 word and they're going to burn out and they're going to post it and it's never going to rank ever. It'll be on page four. No one will ever see it except you and your mom. Okay. So here's what you do. You write the guide. You have the guide to cleaning storm windows. Storm windows are the guide. Okay. I hate everything about storm windows. I did one like Swiss house when I was cleaning windows after Keith motivated me to get involved in this shit. And I was cleaning it <laughs> on a, a 32 foot ladder. Okay. Yeah, because in my video, I was like, it's easy. It's there, easy. There was a wasp nest on the third story inside the storm window, that encasement between the old window and the new storm. I didn't see it. There's a wash nest the size of a half a Coke bottle in there. And I'm like, bro, this is the end. I'm not falling off a 32 foot ladder. I'm done. You know, I was having to take them off. I was having to unscrew them from the panels. I've done you know, that, bro. Dry rotted to hell and they would just fall apart on you. You know, so I was stressful. Hooking the pains on my foot, like trying on the ladder, trying to like put them up, you know. So you could write that guide. There's obviously homeowners out there who want to learn how to clean their storm windows. You don't want to do it. And you could tell the customer, we don't do that. Yeah, would you, I saw, a, we I saw don't. on your site that, yeah, I will teach you how to do it for a fee, but we don't do it. <laughs> we don't clean storm windows. Dude, I've taken on, because we do landscaping and window cleaning, and I've taken on houses with storm windows. And, bro, I've got myself in, like... I've literally had to walk up to the homeowner and apologize. And we, I'd be there with a small crew and be like, I'm so sorry. I, I can't even do this. I'm underqualified. I didn't know I was getting myself into. You know, I, was, I didn't have any uh, self-esteem either when I first got started. I just needed money. I'm talking, for those who don't know, storm windows on 100-year-old houses, the wood swells and the panes. You got to take these old pieces of very delicate glass. And like, once you get it out, you might not even be able to get that thing back in. I've heard nightmare stories, so I won't get into storm windows, but if you're ever in a window cleaning, just stay the hell away from 100-year-old houses and storm windows unless you specialize in that, and then you charge a lot and edu educate the customers why, and that's, and you, but don't just jump into it, ease into it slowly and learn your painful lessons and get your ass whooping, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do them, and the problem is you would have to do them to really know what you're talking about, that's the key. Google knows if the writer knows what they're talking about or not. Okay. And so when I'm writing about muratic acid on concrete, okay, it's because I've sprayed, sprayed so much muratic that I know what it's going to do. 
And Google is aware because the customer or the uh, the reader of the article, the consumer, who wherever they are in the Philippines, Canada, California, they're going to stop on that segment. And when when you get them to stop in your article, Google knows they've stopped. Your article is going to shoot to the roof. OK, and if you want to get like featured snippets and shit like that, you really need to start answering some of the main questions people have on Google. It's very easy to find. All you got to do is Google, you know, how to transplant a lilac tree and Google will give you like 10 more questions that people ask. So you just write that, answer it, answer it all in a guide, answer all their questions about transplanting lilacs and the perils and the positives and things to look out for. Because there is a whole group of people out there who are just garden people and they're never going to hire you to do it, which is fine because I don't want to transplant lilacs. I just want you all to come sit on my website so I can go do more big money jobs that pay me and I can rank higher for the people who want me to do the big money jobs that pay me. But I'm going to get that by getting traffic from lilac trees. So the, the actual modality of how I would do this, because you're, you're like it could be overwhelming, is what I'm seeing is that I want to go on Google and look all this stuff up, but I want to create a mind map. Sorry, let me see. Well, I'll do it and then I'll show you. I want to create a mind map. It's basically a brain dump on paper. You could do it all if you're the person who likes to be like digital or type it. I use XMind software. We make actual mind maps. And so I'm going to create a mind map and brain dump all these ideas and just get it all on paper and then reorganize them into topics like this. Boom, 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 boom. And then do you do like keyword research? Do you find out what's the best? Like how do you organize, organize and prioritize what to write first and what order so it ranks? The first, that's why I gave you like kind of a bigger, a bigger, uh, open-ended title okay is because how to transplant a lilac tree mm -hmm. is probably the heaviest search term when it comes to um moving lilac trees around okay i mean that's the most broad thing i want to name that kind of that title i want to put it as the most broad search query that someone could have how to transplant a lilac. They're definitely so it's like like a bigger funnel. What do you mean by broad? Yeah. So the top is going to be. I'll write this down. All right. So the top. All right. Yes. Oh, uh, you got the whiteboard, dog. Shit. So how? Not that one. How? to transplant lilac tree or, or add your thing in how to do a retaining wall or how to pressure wash or how to like whatever in your business right correct correct whatever the yeah. public is searching for okay whatever you think a consumer is searching for that they would want to diy so that's my criteria they want to diy diy okay they're not calling you to do it they want to, they're thinking about DIYing it. This is crucial because Janet and the G Wagon ain't never going to Google this. Shit. She's going to call you. All right. Yeah. So this is going all the way back to Janet and the G Wagon to close high end jobs because I asked you 20 minutes ago, how do you get the phone to ring off the hook and get a bunch of leads coming into your website, doing it through organic local SEO? And now you're saying go national blog articles. This is, an, this is a hack. This is the shit that Aaron charges. National. Sorry. I want to come do one of your live events, bro. Dude, you got to come to Wash WashCon. I'll bring a video camera and video tech dash. Wow, bro. Let's go, dude. We got the core four there. They love you anyway, dude. Let's go. So, how to transplant? Um, uh, what you're gonna write, and this is not the exact paragraph titles, but these are things that you need to research that they would need to know. Um. Problems, right? What are the problems that you might encounter transplanting a lilac? A, B, C, you know, uh, season, right? Wrong season. Then, and some of this stuff needs to be very elementary. Like, you'd be like, oh, they don't, duh, you don't do it in the wintertime. No, 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 no. You need to write, you need to write that, okay? Season, uh, 
you know, maybe if it's very stressed, like the plant looks really stressed, you don't want to kill it, right? I don't know. Dude, I'm, I'm literally, I'm talking out of my ass here. But if, you know, is the plant stressed? What does it look like? And then you show a picture of what a stressed lilac looks like. Right? Okay, okay, pictures. Well, like what percentage of pictures versus text? Because I follow like Neil Patel's blog and he has the perfect balance of pictures and and. Like, and, and then I start writing shit way too many pictures, and it was like... Dude, don't overthink that, okay? I've got blogs that don't have... They got, like, one picture at the top, and they rank great. I've got blogs that got five foot, five pictures in them, and they do all right. And so don't, okay, don't, don't overload it, all right? Don't overthink this, all right? Uh, how to transplant. And, and then my favorite part... So I'm going to find the problems... Um, I'm going to tell a little bit about a lilac, probably right here, obviously, what the hell is a lilac. Um, and then I go right here and I go, you know, transplanting, right? And then I'm going to go step one, step two, step three. And then I'm going to write out in the most elementary terms, and it may have 12 steps. I'm going to write out in the most elementary terms. First... You're going to, whatever you do, saw the little root. You don't want to saw that root. If the root is above, you know, a certain diameter, these, you guys know this stuff, all right? So you want to write out the steps on how to transplant a lilac. How do you prep the hole for the transplant to go into? Do you fill it with water? Do you put any fertilizer, any miracle grow, any, you know, what do you do? Yeah, like dig it twice as deep and twice as wide, and then you want to amend the soil with the proper whatever that plant requires. Soils, compost, biochar, anything. Two times deep. Fill it. So I'm going to write that down here, too. That's all down here. You see what I'm saying? So what does this... This is very easily... Would you? What if I had like a whole video on how to do it, and I embedded it in the blog? Does that, I love that. I, does it go up or down? No, it's going to be great, because they're going to stay on the page. So do okay. that. That's even better, bro. That's so like, the video has to play within the page. It doesn't link them and like send them off. Okay. YouTube. You want to play in the page. Yeah. Okay. This is like super white hat stuff. And, and why is it, um, why does it work? A, it's because no one's going to do it. Like everything in life, everything you're going to make a lot of money on, no one else wants to do. They don't want to do it. They don't want to. I know a guy. Oh, wait, I got to say this real quick because you said white hat SEO and the reciprocal. Oh, I'm sorry. The opposite of that, not the reciprocal. The opposite is black hat SEO techniques. And I know a guy who got hired by a national, no, a global brand. And he was a marketing director. And this dude was legit just taking videos and running them through like an otter, which just pumps out a trans transcription of what was said and just puts it on the company's national website blog and just post that shit. And it, it looks like run on sentences because remember back in, in the day when that was like cool. It, it, yeah. That was like the late nineties, you know, they've, <laughs> no, this was like, this was in the last few years, bro. Well, I'm telling you when it was cool, you know what I mean? Like there was a day where keyword stuffing and you could, you know, plagiarism wasn't trackable. Um, here's what I'm telling you is that the best way is to just, just write the way it's supposed to be done and give them the secrets. for real. Yeah. Give them the secrets, man. Like what's the thing that kind of makes you, what's the little thing that makes you kind of cringe that you're telling the customer and that you're worried the competition will find out, put that in the article, put that in that. Like, you're like, I should not tell it because what if my competition reads this? that's the line you have to so move the free line forward instead of like give away your best stuff give away stuff that normally you would charge people to consult them for What's What's going on there? dude I, I read your uh, how to transplant a lie like article um and i, I have a lot you need to uh you need to transplant dinner's ready I'm on YouTube live right now with Aaron <laughs> Parker from Lean and Mean Academy teaching us SEO tips and techniques and and Janet with the G wagon says, "I have no interest." Wait, real quick, speakerphone. Everybody's listening. Real quick, wife of Tron says hello. hello. What's up? Uh, Hi. There you go. So, oh. my wife was kind enough, and she was excited, and she prepared a beautiful dinner. So I'm gonna get off here in about 
two minutes. So I'll be in in two minutes. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. So I hope that could, you know, for for what it's worth. There is I, I, I forgot. My, my wife was excited about cooking, uh, and I never forget. I'm at the dinner table with her every single night, but she was excited to cook dinner, and I lost. What time is it? Dude, we've been on for a while, bro. We've been cranky. But look, this is long overdue, Keith. We've been talking about doing this for how long, bro? Like years, I feel like. We're like, dude, let's get on a live. Let's do something, man. So it's been long overdue. I've enjoyed it, man. Thanks for having me on. Dude, thank you for being on. The Landscaping Employee Trap, Keith Kelf's YouTube channel, bro. Man, I, I feel like my mission is to lay down and let people walk across my back with my face in the mud if I have to, because I, I was, uh, I struggled to get my business off the ground. When I finally got it past 100K, I was like, wait a second, that wasn't even that hard. And there's all these people that want to get their business off the ground and to the next level that are, um, that might have this thing in their head because they have negative people around them who aren't entrepreneurs who aren't encouraging them. And so like, that's my whole, whole mission and having someone like you on here, who's done that as well. Like, man, you've been through the trenches and you've came out really successful. So thanks for being on my channel. Bro. Well, I'm going to tell anybody watching here that if you have a chance, buy whatever Keith has for sale. Okay. Because invest it's a mentality you know i know a lot of guys because we get we get hell all the time for selling courses and teaching guys but the funny thing is we have so many guys in the inner circle we have a guy who got with us in our coaching program it was one of our first events in 2018 he came and mike mike is his name i'm not going to i'm not going to put him on blast but he's in new jersey and he started his business in 2018 came to our first event he did over nine hundred eighty thousand dollars in his pressure washing business this past year. He came to the, he came to another event this past uh, February. It was February, like last month. He didn't. Mike doesn't didn't need the event, right? Mike he didn't need to learn what we were teaching. Mike has been he's been with us the whole time. He knows what we're teaching, but he's coming back to the well to be around the right people. And I'll, I just want to. Pour this into the people watching right now. If Keith have it, has it for sale, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that the guy who's running this channel actually cares about your success. And that is not something you can say about your community college, okay? That's obviously charging way more than anything Keith has for sale, okay? The cool part about it is, is that if you hook up with a guy he's like here pitching my courses. Thanks, man. The cool Keep thing. Going. If you hook up with a guy like Keith, you can guarantee that he cares, but you can also guarantee that if you stick around long enough, it's going to work for you. Okay. It's going to work. That's the cool thing is that when you start betting on yourself, guys sometimes don't understand because I get hell all the time for selling courses, but I just have an army of success behind me with guys who have, who've taken them and we've just mentored, mentored, mentored. And, you know, I'm lucky to have guys with pitchforks and torches behind my back to, you know, call off the call off the guys who they hate uh, on the charging for knowledge. They think everything's supposed to be free and you don't want to live in that life. You don't want to live on that life. Pay. Hey, look, dude, what is it? A couple hundred dollars, 300 bucks. What is it? 400 bucks to be a part of whatever Keith is selling. Got one course here, bro. It's the best deal on the planet. OK, so invest your money. You're going to exponentially make it back. But the cool thing is, is you're not buying knowledge. You're buying back time. And a lot of yes, can you be in landscaping for 10 years and learn everything that Keith would teach you in the course? Sure. But could you compress that time frame into a year or two years? By, oh, you can. By My high profit landscape maintenance secrets course combined with the business money basics that teach you how to read a profit and loss statement, how to balance and and, and not commingle your finances, how why we have so many bank accounts and how we have, you know, payroll taxes. And then uh, basically I have Dude, like four, 14 bank accounts, but everything is hyper organized. And then the bookkeeper uh, basically makes sure all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted. So there's there's always money in the accounts. Everybody gets paid and everything is super organized. And then we put that on a system like I do Friday finances. Every Friday I wake up, the first thing I do is the finances. And so 
And then I talk about outsourcing. I talk about pricing jobs and confidence and all that stuff. It's on KeithKelsis.com. Just look up the, uh, go I've, I've go get it, bro. Because here's the thing, like in a year from now, you're going to see the, the time frames that it's compressed for you. And I, I wish that there was a metric because we've got guys who are going and doing six figures their first year in pressure washing, which I know he netted 50. He took it home. Mm-hmm. He just netted 50. In his first year. So it's like, man, you know, my course is what, 400 or 1,000? It's like, dude, it's it's a drop in the bucket, right? So That's where I'm at now. I pay for knowledge and wisdom education. Flip the paradigm. Go get into the golf club. Go get into the, the, the private club in your city if you have one. Spin to be around the people who want you to win. Because guess what? The rest of those yahoos on the Facebook groups don't want you to win. The rest of your local competition don't want you to win. And having one, two, five, ten people, maybe if it, even if it's just Keith who wants you to win, here's, here's the trick. Buy, buy the course so Keith has to have a vested interest. All right? <laughs> buy it to be closer to the guys who are doing it keith's one of the best dude you started me off man i really appreciate what you've done you're a machine when it comes to content like i don't even know anybody who's such a machine you 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 make me a, i aspire to be as prolific as you are in the content department my friend i have something called the marketing syndication method and then the marketing progression pyramid it's the mpp model i created and basically the very top of it is when you step outside and you outsource you hire a team of virtual assistants and then what they do is they basically i won't even get into that right now but it changed my life because i was depressed excited because i was depressed because i was excited pumping out all this content and then i realized like you don't have to do it all yourself Right. So you you've you have a, a framework that they can just plug into and basically a big cog that turns the wheel. They just assemble these yeah, people. So, you know that thing where you put the ball in the top and it falls down all the things and the tickets yep. come out that game. So basically I my my only job is just to stand in front of a camera and talk or in front of a phone and then a team of virtual assistants do mostly everything else. But I've been through like, you know, a hundred virtual assistants to find my core team of 15 people. You and know? they're using that for like social media content, stuff like that for their for their lawn care business, for their landscape business. To where they, they can just film it, basically put it in and all of it, you know, all of it gets edited and stuff. It's kind of spits out them some like content. Oh. And they can just they get 10 videos and they're just posting them like one every other day. Yeah, whatever the we use uh, Monday.com and we have a content calendar, but I also like to hire people that I don't have to micromanage. And so I keep it a little bit more loose like that. Like our podcast comes out every Monday. For instance, my podcast is 100 percent automated. I don't even do anything at all. And we're dropping podcasts every Monday. We just crossed 600,000 views. And my podcast is another uh, revenue stream that makes money. And it's on 17 different podcast platforms. And then my article writer is writing, you know, 1500 to 2000 word, well-written, highly researched blog post articles. And he's actually a professional writer. And then that's getting, and then I also pay extra to have that pumped out to my email list of 13,000 people. Then I have my other content syndication manager who's going on and chopping up the content and sharing on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And then I have, uh, they're also writing show notes. They're doing that stuff. I I have a couple different videographers. I have three different editors, uh, editor in Serbia. Uh, I did have an editor in Russia. What? All of this is in that. All this framework. You, you're giving them the framework on how. Oh, to I'm it. sorry. That's a whole new course that I'm developing because I don't know if people express an interest in even. I don't even talk about all that shit to anybody because I don't think people want to know. I wouldn't even. I charge people 5000 bucks to teach them all that. We do one on one Zoom calls. We do two, two five hour coaching calls, deep dive intensives where I'll coach your team how to do all that stuff, like your business. And so, like, Sorry, I think I'm going over everybody's heads, but don't we do, yeah, dude? Like, they just need to know <laughs> landscaping business. If, if you go to keithkelsis.com, you can get access to my <laughs> courses where I have I have how to start a landscaping business in zero to a hundred k, and then the high profit landscape maintenance secrets. You'll see it right there. Let's I went. Go. I went. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I know. Well, I know the benefits, but a lot of guys 
the benefits of their landscaping business, having that team assembled and how to do it. Because, dude, I went years trying to figure that out. And mm -hmm. if I had a framework on what to do first, what to do second, um, that would have probably cut down at least a year of that time. So what's your time worth? Buy it. Buy it. He's, uh, he's the best guy in the game, dude. I love you. You got a, you got a heart of gold, Keith. You got a heart of gold, dude. And the, and the people here on YouTube love you, dude. They really do. They love you. Thanks for uh, catching me right there. You just caught me. And see, KeithKelfus.com. Check it out. What? Thanks for hey. pitching my stuff. Man. Hey, thanks, everybody, for being on, on the show. I'm going to actually turn this into a market. It's, huh? worth every cent. it's worth every damn cent, dude. You know? I really, really appreciate you, man. I can't wait to come to Tennessee, hang out, get some good food. Let's go, bro. I'll holler at you soon, okay? Later, bro. All right, buddy. Later, everybody. Thank you so much. Peace.